the end of October, we had the opportunity to take advantage of our heavy platforms, we call them, and deploy them with the 36 Engineer Brigade at Fort Hood, Texas. And we used those heavy robots, the 13-ton vehicles, to pull around a Miklik autonomously so they could do a combined arms breach. It's an opportunity for us to insert our technology into things that the Army believes they want to do. It's just the tip of the iceberg on what autonomy can do for them. It takes the soldier out of harm's way. But it really gets them thinking about, hey, there's a better way to do this, and the autonomy enables that. So we're out here at Fort Irwin, California, at the National Training Center, and we're working with the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment, the opposing forces, in a live force-on-force -force experiment to understand what are the capabilities that autonomy enables for them to accomplish their mission more effectively. We have been using our robots, controlled by the soldiers of the reconnaissance squadron to do re long range reconnaissance, giving them a capability they've never had before. Ready for autonomy. Copy that, we'll push the block too. What that is providing us is unmanned reconnaissance assets out in the field to where it's not gonna put anybody's life at risk or put them in any harm's way or anything like that. We can get reconnaissance assets further and into more difficult positions. Getting that field experience and insights from them so we can not only provide them with better technology for the future fight, but also inform requirements for the Army. As of right now, I think it's a great system. It's working very well for what we needed to. And I'm very interested to see in the direction that it's going to go for um, with the advancements in the in the software and the systems that you're not. Here at the last experiment, we're focusing on the scientific objectives, improving the overall architecture of the system, focusing on better perception, better global planning, so we can take advantage of external information and make the overall system a better experience for the soldiers. We've built a new architecture for these neural networks and how we process the a priori data, how we train the models more efficiently, and then also adding a global surface net, which allows us to do a better job of detecting negative obstacles. And then finally, the architecture really enables us to better adapt to new environments much more quickly. It used to be where it would take us weeks to build a new model and retrain. Since we've been out here just for two weeks, we've actually working on our third model right now. As the program comes to an end, we need to be mindful of how we're going to transition this capability and provide the best opportunities for the services to get that technology. And, and one of the things is they're not really interested in buying straight up autonomy. What they're interested in, the capabilities that autonomy enables. The autonomy is really the brains. We don't care what vehicle it goes on. It doesn't limit their opportunities there.